In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an homage, kind of? This is a really well-built watch from Mercur that definitely has some inspiration from Seiko, but I can't quite figure out exactly which watch, if there is any particular watch that it is copying, which actually made me like it a lot more. Now this video is part three of my May Microbrand Showcase series. Let me give you a sneak preview of the other watches I'm taking a look at this month, and then we'll take a look at the Mercur Vintage Homage Diver. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. And surprisingly, I'm not that big of a fan of these kind of ultra cheap homage watches. I recognize that they are an amazing value for the money, and I'm in a position where I would never buy a luxury timepiece, I'm never gonna be able to afford that. So you would think that homage watches would be appealing to me, I know they are to so many of you guys, but I just can't quite get over the kind of copying aspect of it. And so it's kind of ironic that Mercur has named this watch their vintage homage diet and yet put more originality into it than anything I've seen coming out of Steel Dive or Pagani Design or any of those super budget Chinese homage brands. Now, as I mentioned, this video is part of my May Microbrand Showcase series. There's five short mini reviews in this series. At the end of this video, I'll give you a choice between two more of them to check out. But next, we're gonna take a look at this watch from Mercur. Now, I do need to let you guys know that I received this watch from Mercur for free, which is why you saw the paid promotions flag in the beginning of this video. However, other than the watch itself, I didn't receive any compensation from Recur, nor did they have any input into the content of this review. At first glance, this may seem like just a straight up Seiko turtle homage, but if you take a closer look, things aren't quite that simple. While Mercur has obviously drawn heavy influence from Seiko's style, this watch combines its design elements in ways that produce a unique vintage style watch, which to my knowledge isn't a direct copy of any particular Seiko model. And I really appreciate that. I like some originality in watches. I'm not a big fan of those kind of one-to-one -one copy homages. And I think that small level of uniqueness really helped me to connect with this watch in ways that I usually don't with these homage watches. This is a well-built, well-specced, vintage style dive watch that is affordable and a ton of fun to wear. It features a cushion case that kind of reminds you of a turtle, but it's got a three o'clock crown and a smaller 42 millimeter case diameter. The dial looks like it's come from a Seiko Captain Willard, but then they've mixed in some circular markers with the rectangular ones to make it a little bit different. And the handset, which looks spectacular by the way, looks like it was taken from one of Seiko's Grand Seiko divers. Now apply a warm brown vintage looking loom color over everything, add on a pleasantly domed sapphire crystal and a sapphire bezel insert, and you wind up with a pretty great watch. For $250, you're also getting a Seiko NH35 movement, a sturdy build quality, and 200 meters of water resistance. They've also included a pretty unique, extremely supple and soft FKM rubber strap, which gives the watch a really tough kind of look and is extremely comfortable. I'm not sure I've seen any other rubber strap that has this amount of flexibility on it. I mean, this thing just really melts around your wrist and yet it's also very thick and high quality at the same time. It doesn't feel like something that's gonna break or snap on you. This strap's uniqueness and high level of quality make it a great addition to this watch. But if you do wanna swap it out, you've got drilled lugs and a 20 millimeter lug width, so it's very easy to find alternative straps. I've thrown it on this Cordura strap from Vario that has kind of a drab green color to it, and I really like the way it looks on that, and I think putting it on a NATO would also be a great option as well. Now, I think overall $250 is a great price for the specifications, quality, and design that this watch has in it. But because this watch is manufactured in China by a Chinese micro brand, I'm sure some people are gonna be comparing it to other Chinese brands like Steel Dive, which offer similarly specced and similarly looking watches for less than half the price of this. Now, I have the Steel Dive Captain Willard homage. And that one does look very similar to this watch from Mercur and it only costs $100. But I just had a really hard time connecting with it both because it is such a one-to-one -one copy of Seiko's design and because the build quality and the finishing is subpar. I mean, obviously not subpar for $100 because what do you expect for $100? But it just wasn't good. By contrast, this watch from Mercur just feels better built, better finished, and again, it has just that little amount of uniqueness to it that sort of elevates it outside of the, I'm just trying to rip off another brand's design territory. 
The bezel on this watch features some of the best, smoothest bezel action that I've ever felt on a watch in any price range. And the cathedral hands on this are just gorgeous. They've got a slight bevel to them so that they catch the light in different angles depending on where the light's coming from. And they have a really beautiful fine brushwork to them as well. And that sort of brownish patina loom color just works great on this style of watch. Now in the dark, you're not gonna get the same level of performance as you would get from C3, but you still do get a very healthy green glow that gives you a good portion of longevity. It's definitely a functional level of loom. Now on the negatives, the underside of the watch is pretty much completely unfinished. It's all polished with no markings or nothing on the case back. Likewise, the crown is unsigned. And while the brushwork and the polishing on the case is done to a very high standard, especially for this price, the case does have a little bit of a generic look to it. Despite those issues, I would still definitely take this watch over something from Steel Dive, even at that $250 price point. I think this one's gonna be competing more with the likes of the Orient Kamasu and Seiko's Seiko 5 Sports line. Now that's some pretty stiff competition, but if you're drawn to the kind of vintage style and look of this watch, I think it's a great one to pick up. All right, now this watch is available direct from Mercur's website. I'll leave a link to that down below where you can check it out. But let's go ahead and move on to the next watch in the series and you get to pick that. Do you want to see the SR71 Blackbird inspired FD1 from base timepieces? Or would you prefer to skip ahead to the last video in the series and check out a cool field watch from Satori? Just click on the one that you want or jump down to the description where you can see links to all the videos in the series down below. All right, I'll see you on the next video.